Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how I do a carved top guitar with a double cutaway. To start with, I'm going to insert a canvas here. I'm going to use this PRS sketch. And so if you notice on this sketch here, I'm sorry, on this canvas, if I create a sketch and make a straight line, you can see this is looking down at, as the strings at zero degrees or 90 degrees, whatever your perception is. Um, in which case you can see this top, the flat part of the carved top, has a different angle as well as the body proper has a different angle and which is creating this angle back here so we take a look at those angles I'm just going to extend these lines out so we can tie them all together here this tail off. So you can see on this PR, PRS model what's going on if we do a dimension on here. And it's about one degree. And I think in reality it's a 1.1 degree for a PRS. But then if we dimension from this line to this line, you can see it's 2.5 degrees. So there's an additional 1.5 degree between these two. Now this one degree that's what we call the neck break angle and that's usually compensated for right here in this joint. Um, the floor of the neck joint is not um, parallel to the top. It has an angle in it so that the neck slants down and you need that neck break angle of at least one degree on most every build. Even if you're using a low profile bridge, it's, it's, it's good to have some neck break angle in your guitar if you can put it in there. Um, and then also if you have a really tall bridge, you'll have to put neck break angle in um, so that the strings will come down to meet the fretboard um, back here on the, on the tail end of the fretboard. Um, the only way to get around that to not have a lot of neck break angle if you have a tall bridge is to recess the bridge into the, into the top. But suffice it to say, um, you can see that there's about uh, 2.5 degrees of angle between this flat part of the guitar. And when I say flat, I mean uh, in reference to this line right here. So the point I'm getting at here is whenever I draw, I'm making my drawing, I'm not drawing from the strings down to project down because it would project straight down and if it projected straight down that wouldn't work because we actually need this angle to get to the bottom so if I were to grab all of this whoops all of this and then rotate it that 2.5 degrees this is the actual angle I'll be um, set up on and I'll be drawing my master down here on the bottom and then whenever I project everything everything will project straight up. I'll mention this real quickly here. If you wanted to do a PRS top, um, I think it's the same person that this drawing that owns this drawing. I'm pretty sure it is. There is already a 3D model in grabcad.com. Um, just search for PRS and there's a couple of models in there already drawn and this looks like the same drawing he used to produce those models. If you try to do this on your own, um, what we're going to do here is actually we're going to create an outer outline and an inner outline and then we're going to loft between them. And the catch to the whole thing to be able to do the loft is you can't have any breaks. Say if this were one of the loft rails and this was a loft rail, this line needs to be continuous with no breaks in it and then this line again would need to be continuous all the way around with no breaks. 
and a lot of times if you start doing offsets and um, patching in like a loft I'm sorry like a spline into a circle or something to get perfect geometry um, it creates a break uh, and then the loft doesn't work you could still probably get by using patches um, the patch should still work so if you need to make a break in the line just to get your design to work um, you could and then try to patch it together but the easiest way is to have um, smooth lines with no breaks and then just simply loft between them um, so for instance on this model if you if you want to try to draw this model exactly um, for this outside line here you'd want to draw this this little um, recurve area as your outside line so as you can see what happens it goes around the body here but then it dives in and it stays to the inside so this line out here would be drawn secondary your first um, total outline of the guitar would be to this inside line here so drawing this um, little trough all the way around and in his design he actually um, did a loft just for this trough area um, that's why you can see these breaks right here um, he actually did a separate um, loft just for the trough and then this piece out here is essentially flat and that's just a, um, a uh, patch um, to get this area to come out but if you try to draw the outside and then blend these in you're gonna get breaks here and you're gonna get breaks here and it's not gonna loft very well anyway just throwing that in there I don't know why you would want to draw this uh, model when you can just download it already um, point of it being is these break angles you need to figure that out um, before oh I'm sorry and the second break angle here is this taper um, you have to have this taper in uh, otherwise um, these these horn areas out here are going to be way too tall and because you're lofting such a short distance from the outside edge to the center of the horn if this thing was an inch tall the same as back here in the middle of the body um, your sides of the horn would be almost um, vertical um, it's going to look ridiculous like that or it might look really cool who knows you can do what you want to do but uh, that's why this taper is in here um, yeah, I have my body twisted now yeah, let me undo that move yeah that's why this taper is in here um, so that this top gets thinner and thinner as it gets closer to the horns alright I'm going to shut that off and um, start a new sketch here and I'm going to insert and I'm going to use that same MK1 design that we were working on in my my other videos and I know I said I never use these planes but just for this this case I'm just going to go ahead and use this plane and let's pull it up a little bit click OK on that and now I have a new canvas here the MK1 I'm going to calibrate this to about 13 inches across the bout here what did I just do calibrate here to here's 13 okay flip this around a little bit now what I want to do is create a sketch on that same plane and all I want to do is create a straight line as a reference line to the midpoint pull that back here somewhere and hit enter and then grab my MK1 and edit that canvas and move it to the center point at the intonation line doesn't have to be perfect guys like that I'm gonna say OK to that move and then just draw a random line back here at the edge of the guitar like that and then trim off the excess and delete the line now I have this starting point back here. I'm going to create the outside shape first. I'm going to use a fit point spline for that. And here again, as few points as possible is better. Or you could also use the other spline mode if you prefer. It does make nicer, roundier lines, it seems. It seems it doesn't take quite so much fidgeting around. Now I do want to put points in right at the sides of the neck here just as a general design practice those are very important points in the design to be able to get things to work out 
I'm going to put one in the center of the neck. Then again at the edge of the fretboard. And then just fill in the rest here. And enter that. And the only thing I'm going to do with this besides shaping it is I'm going to take this one line and make it vertical. Escape out of there. And then I'm just going to shape in the rest of these lines. And I can live with that. Now the next thing I want to do is lock all this down because it does have a tendency to move when you start adding to it. Now I want to draw this part of the cutaways in here or this part of the carve. I'm going to again use my fit point spine. I'm going to go all the way out here to the tip of the horn and I'm going to put in four points along this line and end it on this point right here. Enter that and then the same thing on the other side. And then you shape those in. Yeah, something like that's pretty close. And the next thing I want to do is add some straight lines. And these need to go across the ends of these horns here. And I try to make them cross in the center line. Close to right angle to this line out here in the center. It doesn't have to be exact. Something like that. Make sure these hold water. Good. Okay, now I want to draw the flat part of the top of the car where all the hardware sits. Again, I'm going to use a fit point spline. This time, though, I'm not going to go all the way back to the beginning of this arch. I'm going to start here. Be careful when you click in here that you're not grabbing the center point because it will snap to the center of that line if you're not careful or if you're or if your intersecting line is very close to the center you have to be careful so what you want to do is click on the intersection point here between those two lines I'm going to leave this one kind of wide just to make sure I get that arch started in there and then these lines go down here to about this place here and up here then I'm going to go to the center and put this on the center out here and then just sort of mirror on the other side what we did on on that side but not exactly but close kind of like that and then again I'm going to leave this very wide to start with and hook in to the see it went to midpoint there it looks like it you're snapped on but actually the midpoint is very close we don't want midpoint we want this intersection right here and then enter that. Make sure that's holding water there. Yeah. And then just shape these in. Now what's prone to happen here is these lines get crossed right here and that won't work out. You always need to make sure that these are coming into a point and this line is not crossing over this line in this area. I'm going to go ahead and use this one line as vertical again and then stretch it a little bit good I'm not going to fidget with this too much I'm going to try not to fidget with this too much don't get too carried away here this line could come in a little bit like that check this point and I'm going to call that close enough for this tutorial Okay, and now we need some um, places to put in our rails to guide our lofts with. So we'll use straight lines again. And we'll just go from this edge. Now make sure you grab the edge. If this handle is close to the edge for whatever reason, 
or this one it'll snap to the handle so you can grab this edge and then just come almost straight across and snap on this edge if you miss the line a little white circle will show up there and you need to make sure you get on the lines and then again on the other side of the bow or the uh, waist do the same uh, same thing snap on these lines and then one more back here and so you should have all these little watertight areas now yeah, it looks pretty good okay I think we're finished with that sketch you can finish that sketch and I'm just gonna call this one the master now we need to decide where our, our break angle is and how thick our tops gonna be so in order to do that I'm gonna roll up here on the side looking at the front and I'm gonna create a sketch here on the front plane and I'm just gonna simply draw a line straight up now this line will represent the thickness of your top underneath the bridge minus your faux binding or your binding around the edge of the the guitar top that will be done in a different way we're gonna just use an assembly extrude to make that binding area so this is basically just the carved top proper the part that actually gets carved on and for this one I think I'm only gonna go about mm, maybe point point seven on this it'd be a pretty thick top because I'm gonna have a two a point two uh, binding around it so I'll just put that right there and now we'll draw another straight line and this is that angle um, for your top angle for your taper in your top and this is pretty critical just a, a point one or point two in either direction will really make a difference in how the horns look so I'm going to stick with uh, Paul Reed Smith um, and I'm just going to go to a, a two points let's see two point six I think whoops that's the distance <laughs> let me tab that and get into the degrees there yeah 2.6 actually I'm gonna go a little 2.5 a little bit thicker horn okay so once you get that you can finish this sketch and name it whatever you want I'm just gonna call it the break angle actually it's not the break it's the um, carve the carve taper top taper here we go and then um, create a plane at an angle and select that top line right there and leave it at zero degrees and hit OK and that gave us a new construction plane to draw on and this is the top taper and then you can hide the sketch and create a sketch on that top taper and what we want to do I'm going to hide this canvas is project in all these segments here oh I forgot to break it up didn't I sorry back up we're not quite there yet uh, we could cancel that project and finish the sketch for now I forgot to break I forgot to break the uh, master so uh, let's turn off this sketch and edit the master sketch now that we're not moving anything we can go ahead and unlock all this stuff okay now what we want to do is loft between these rails this will be a rail this will be a rail so we're going to try to loft from here to here but you, as you can see we're we can't select just those segments so we need to create those segmented lines and to do that you use this modify and break con command here and when you hover on a line a little red X will show up to where it's going to break so if I hover here you can see those two red X's that's perfect now I've isolated just this little piece of line I want to do the same thing for the this part up here now those two will loft perfectly and the same thing then go up here and you can see that will break at this line here and that's good so we want to break it at that line and then this one is already correct that one's correct we'll break that one you want to keep this whole arch intact up here 
so we'll break it back here between those two points perfect and the same over here between those two points and that should be good I think make sure this is all Oh, this one too. We want to make sure that it breaks here. We don't want this part connected to this arch here. But this one, that one's, oh, it's this one. Yeah, got to break this one too there. And that should do it. Now we can finish that sketch. If you want to lock it, you can. And then head over to this other sketch we started and edit that. And now we're going to project in these segments. including this little heel and then I like to go in and just to make sure that I have these points I want this point and this and these and then you do definitely need to get these three points here in the back because they will not come in with the segments I think the other ones would so you can click OK on that finish that sketch and this is the carved top alrighty so now if you turn on both the sketches the master and the carved top Take a look at this. That angle's a little steep actually for this. This is not going to leave much at all for a horn right here. I'm going to change this angle. So what I want to do is change the angle of that line. So I'm going to go back to this top taper and I'm going to edit that sketch. And I'm going to change this angle right here. I'm going to put that at two degrees and see what that looks like. Look at the other side over here. Yeah, it's starting to get pretty high on this side. Okay, I'm going to go with two degrees on that. That'll work. Now what you want to use is a tool we haven't used before in my videos um, in this construction here is this plane through three points or maybe I did use it in the other once or twice I don't remember anyway um, if you don't know my other videos I took this plane through three points and clicked on these three dots right here and I pinned it to my toolbar so I have it up here now so I'm just going to click on that and then the three points I'm going to use are here, here, and here. Then I'm going to finish that and right click on that plane and create a sketch. And now what you want to do on this sketch is you want to first project in. It's very important to use project. That way all of your um, sketches touch one another and that will save you from a lot of problems later. So I want this top um, point and this outer edge point right here projected in. And I'm going to use a spline and create a spline from here to here. Hit enter. Now for this part I want it to flow in from this top. So I'm going to pull this down until it's about on the top line here. Certainly don't, certainly don't want to go below the line because then it will bulge right here. A little high of the line is better than a little below the line. And that looks pretty reasonable to me for an arch. And then I'm going to create a recurve right here. And if you wanted to, you could actually take this below. If you wanted to dip in and then come back up, you can go below like that. I'm going to just keep mine kind of, kind of straight and small right around the edge here. Finish that sketch, and you can go ahead and start your labeling convention if you want to. I'm not going to bother. I'll make another one of those right here. Oops, already had something selected. Cancel that. Try again. Uh, 
and click OK and create a sketch here. Again, we want to project in those points and create a fit point spline. Like I said, I have been using the fit, fit point for all this. You, if you'll notice down here, you have also this control point. Um, you can try that if you like. Um, I don't think it's going to work whenever it does. I don't think it's going to work very well when you only have two points to connect to. You'd have to have at least another third point or maybe four points. Um, that one you just draw your points, and then after you're finished, all you can do is move the points around. You you can't you don't have these bars on it to manipulate it with. All you can do is drag the points around. But it does make real nice curves. So anyway, this one I want to be level with this top, which actually should be about parallel. I'm going to keep it just a little bit above parallel. Not parallel, I'm sorry. Um, horizontal. And then here again I'm going to do a recurve. A small recurve here. Maybe a little bit bigger recurve to show off the waist a little bit. Yeah, maybe I will. A little deeper recurve in this waist. Finish that sketch. And here's the gist of it. Now that we have this much done, we can go into our surface tools, loft, and we want to loft from this upper segment. Only the upper segment. I got something else in there. Upper segment to this lower segment. And then we'll just add rails here. This rail. And add this rail. Click OK. Now this is upside down or inside out as it were. Um, that's okay. They're all going to come out that way. So I'll just wait until I'm finished drawing and then flip them all over using this uh, modify reverse normal tool here. So that's the gist of how you do it using loss and rails. And uh, there are a few more caveats to it once you get around the horn area. So when you're drawing these horns, uh, you use a little bit different up here. What you want to do is create your three point plane through these three points because we're going to use a continuous sketch. Now, you could, if you wanted to, do this in halves and meet them in the middle, um, and it may work out better depending on how pointy you want your horns to be up here. And I'm going to create a sketch in here, and then I'm going to add all three of those points project in all three of these points. Click OK on that. And now on this one you don't want your spline to go all the way between all three points like that. Um, the reason being is you don't want this arch here because your two um, sides of your body are coming into a pointed edge right here. So you need lines, you need these splines to be ending right at this point so it can maintain that edge. Otherwise it's going to go from an edge to an arc and it's going to put little bulges in here and that's not going to be very desirable, I don't think. Now obviously if you did that you could just sand it out and you know it's a lot of hand finishing anyway. These they are still handmade just because you're using tools. Um, Everyone's always used tools. You can't cut wood with your hands, so <laughs> tools are always used, whether they're routers or, or CNC's or hand planes. They're still tools as tools. Anyway, um, so what I'm going to do is create two splines here, one on this side, and this one's going to be way, way less dramatic of a arc and way less dramatic of a recurve. Very slight. And then I'm going to create another one on the other side. Something about like that, I think. Finish that one. And then while we're up here, we'll go ahead and create one more so we can shape out this 
tip of this horn through these three points right here. Oh, I already got three selected. Let's try this again. There we go. And on this one, just project in the upper one and the lower one. And again, a spline right here. And you want this top part of the spline to match this, or just, just slightly above this angled line up here. And then we're going to push that out to the end. Something about like that. I'm happy with that. I don't think I want any recurving out here. Finish that one. Yeah, let's go ahead and loft through here and see what we can get from this upper line. Whoops. Add a rails in will be Where's my rail? This line. And this line. Okay. Now this loft you could do if you wanted to, if it works out better for you, you could just do this half over here and then this half over here. I'm gonna try to loft the whole thing and see how it looks. So I'm gonna loft from here in here and then I'm gonna add this one and then for a rail I'm gonna use this okay and now down here we can just do a loft from this bottom one here up to this one here and that's its own little body in there let's go ahead and do a patch on this whole top piece click OK on that and then we can loft here to here and for these rails we can use this straight edge here and this sketch or edge continue over here Now one thing I will show you here on some drawings, uh, the PRS for one, this arc does not end into the neck like this. Instead there's a straight line that comes out this direction and this arc ends up back here. And that can be problematic. So what you run into the issue, what you, what you, what you have to achieve in that instance is instead of having this nice arc to this whole area right here you would need the arc to actually go straight here and then curve down and meet down here is what you would need to do in order to make that happen all you have to do is do a extrude and you extrude the line up instead of distance you go to, to, to an object to this point right here click OK on that and then you can create a construction plane through two edges you can use this edge and this edge and create on that project in your lower point and your upper point make a spline and then put in the shape that you need say something like this P 
finish that and now you can modify and split face split this face and for your splitting tool you use this line extend the splitting tool and click OK then you can delete that face and then you would be able to law from here actually I don't think the loft is going to work anymore I think I'm going to have to patch it and rails here yeah it didn't work it's hard to see too with all the other stuff I got underneath it let me try a patch here turn off the chain just trying to patch here here here, here, missing something here, uh, uh, see there's a problem right there with my loft, okay so that didn't work because um, I shouldn't have extruded because the extrude, because of the offset of this plane and this plane they're not um, parallel to one another, it extruded in the wrong place so what you would have to do then before you did this part is you would have to put this line on this sketch up here and then you could loft between those two lines to create this and then do everything I just shown you and it should cut directly to these points and then you could create the loft or the um, patch in there but anyway that's how if you ever get where well wait a minute I need a I need this I need this plane to touch this plane is basically what you're doing um, with a curved line with a spline so you may find out you'll need that at some point I, if, you try, if you're trying to do like a PRS style or any any guitar that doesn't end directly into the fretboard if it ends out here somewhere you're gonna have to use this method out here I think so we just undo all that we don't need any of this and redo that. Okay, I'm going to turn off these sketches here and I'm going to modify and reverse the normal of all the yellow stuff. Make everything gray. Click OK on that. And then what you can do is catch all of this and stitch it together. Okay, you can see there's 43 and it's only going to fix 32. And that's fine. Okay, now we have all these bodies and the top the bottom has not been patched yet. So what we can do is an extrude and get just this outer edge right here. Actually, let's go ahead and pat, let's go ahead and stitch this so it will all it'll all come down in one extrude. We can just select all of this and stitch it and you can see it's not closed now we can do an extrude in here and select this outer edge and this will come down the thickness of your binding or your faux binding 0.2 inches Whoop, that needs to be a negative number so that'll give your faux binding on there and now we can simply do a patch actually I'm going to go ahead and stitch all this first into one surface and now I can do a patch on this bottom stitch all that together 22 to 22 that'll make a solid body and, and there you have it folks that's the way I do mine uh, you can go back into change this view check your edges out on it makes it easier to see the actual design so you can play around with it and come up with your own methods you, know, you might try to do this as an arch up here you may, it might look better, better to you or you can you know loft from here to here or leave this line out totally and just loft this whole thing you can leave that arc in there um, instead of this line instead of this line being straight um, you could loft this whole arc 
bring the whole arc in and don't even use this part at all don't use these straight lines and just loft um, this whole these two arcs together you know what I mean and then put your rail in the center to make it round but this is just another way of doing it and I prefer this over trying to use the sculpting method I think the sculpting method is just way too tedious for me it's a lot of a lot of mouse work to sculpt um, but it may be a better better thing for some people anyway folks thanks for stopping by and uh, God bless you guys oh I forgot to mention <laughs> don't forget you need to save often um, when you're doing these all these splines and lofts uh, it crashes the machine pretty readily alright man take care